Why are we not doing that? Mm. Yeah, it just blows your mind that we're not doing this. And, and, the, and the simple reason why we're not doing it is because it has very little sort of public awareness. The story is that you're saying is basically we're throwing a hell of a lot of money uh, at a wide range of things because we want to deliver all things to all men. And here are 35 billion, 12 things you can focus on to actually make a big impact. So let's talk about that. What are the biggest things that we actually should be looking at, Bjorn? Uh, one obvious thing is maternal and newborn health. Mm. Uh, so uh, one of the things that surprised me was so many moms are still dying mm -hmm. from childbirth. So about 300,000 moms die each and every year in this world, and they needn't do that in childbirth. Uh, 2.3 million kids die each and every year in the first 28 days in their life on Earth. That's just terrible, and again, totally, totally unnecessary. So much of this is because there's complications during birth, and there's no materials to, to handle that. So the mom has a, a preeclampsia or eclampsia, basically high blood pressure, and she bleeds out. Uh, we know how to fix that. We fix that routinely in the rich world. We should make sure moms get into institutional birth, give, give birth in institutions instead of just doing it at home, so that there is an opportunity to treat her if things go wrong. Likewise, you know, uh, and again, I didn't know this at all, uh, so most kids that come out of mom just start breathing right away, about 80%. So 15% need a slap in the back to get going, and then they start breathing, and that's fine. But even in rich countries, about 5% of all kids just don't breathe. Wow. So you need to start giving, you, you need to push in air into their lungs and then, and then they go and then they survive, right? So, and of course, we just do that in rich countries and not rocket science. You just need a simple uh, hand pump. I mean, in rich countries, we have something more fancy because we can't have such easy things, right? <laughs> uh, but but, but, but in, in, uh, in, in, in the poor part of the world, you just often don't have this hand pump. It costs $65 for each of these hand pumps. It works for probably three years, and in that, in that time you could probably save about 25 kids. $65, 25 kids, that life saved. That doesn't seem like a lot. Why are we not doing that? Mm. And again, the point here is not that, you know, I, I don't want everybody to rush out and do a GoFund just for this hand pump. It's about getting all of these things. So, you know, for instance, uh, uh, disinfectants. You know, you'd imagine that's a good idea to have disinfectants on, on the surfaces in your hospital wing. But again, we don't. And, and so a lot of places do, but you know, about a fifth don't. We should make sure that that has it there. And so the point with this argument is really just to tell people if we focus more on maternal and newborn health, that's by making sure that the women come in uh, to institutional birth, so about uh, two thirds are doing it now. We want almost all in institutional birth. And that these institutions actually have midwives, that they have disinfectants, that they have this hand pump, these very, very simple things. World Health Organization has a whole list of this. If you did all of that, it would cost about $5 billion a year. So not nothing. But then you could save 166,000 moms each and every year. And you could save 1.2 million kids each and every wow. year. It's just, you know, it just blows your mind that we're not doing this. And, and, the, and the simple reason why we're not doing it is because it has very little sort of public awareness. Uh, I don't know, if, have you guys ever seen the, uh, this is the Monty Python skit, uh, skit with uh, the machine that says pling? No. no. You have, it's yeah. a, 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 the meaning of life. You, oh God, you've got to say that. Anyway, so uh, they're, they're, they're these doctors uh, uh, in, in an operating room or something, uh, and they have all these machines, and they're all totally excited about the machines, and the, uh, and the manager of the hospital comes in, and he's, then they, oh, let's show him the machine that says Pling, which is apparently the most expensive machine in the hospital, so everybody's very excited about it. And then at one point, John Cleese goes, uh, still something missing, huh? Hmm? Hmm. Patient. Yes. Where's the patient? Anyone seems like patient. They're so excited about these expensive machines right. that they forget that this is about the woman. And yeah. you know, she it's funny and she get just neglected all the time. Yeah. And they want to emphasize the machine that says playing. Right. I mean, and and you know, obviously it's a character, and and you know, I'm not saying that all doctors are like that, but doctors probably rather would have an MRI scanner than they would one of those hand pumps, right? Because you know it's fun to go to a conference and say yes we have this you know this new MRI scanner 2000 or whatever it's called but you know this hand pump oh yeah you know, old old stuff 
But it's actually this hand pump that'll help save uh, 25 kids. Because in some ways, you know, when you've got people is sitting around a room in the UN and they're all very intelligent, they almost desire complex solutions because it's more grandiose, isn't it, than something as simple and as prosaic as a hand pump. Yes. But, but it's not that they haven't promised also to fix <laughs> this, right? Because they promise everything. Mm. But, but the point is that when you're promising everything, you have no direction. If you have 169 priorities, you have no priorities. Right. Yeah. And if you promise everything, you inevitably leave it to people to say, hmm, would I rather have a cheap hand pump that nobody cares about? Or would I like a lot of expensive stuff and a new hospital wing and you know, all these other things? Uh, so you know, the, the, the truth is we almost inevitably end up doing stuff that's less effective, not because people are bad, but because they have lots of other incentives apart from you know, doing the best things first. And so that's why I think by making this book and by forcing everyone to sort of confront the fact that there are some incredibly effective things we can do, it becomes a little harder to not do that first.